the emphasis that is placed upon Japanese charts is not between the close and compared to the prior close, but rather they compare the open of a current session to the close of a current session. Now, the reason that they do this is they feel that each day during a trading session, there is a basic battle going on. And the battle is between the bulls and the bears. And the outcome of that battle is graphically illustrated in a candlestick. In other words, by looking at the net result of where it opened to where it closed, one can ascertain who actually was able to dominate market activity. And so the most important thing that we'll begin with is that they place their greatest emphasis on the relationship between the open and close of that session. Then they will then compare it to the prior days, and as we'll get into in a little bit, create patterns from them. Now, we're going to start with just some very, very basics. And, and if we can view uh, the little piece of paper that we have down here, it's a little crooked, so I'm going to straighten it out. I, I assume that everyone here is familiar with the bar chart, in that we have a vertical line. The bottom represents the low of the day. The top represents the high of that trading cycle. They put a horizontal slash to the left-hand side. That represents the open and they put a horizontal slash to the right-hand side to represent the close. Now, this is a day in which it closed lower. On a day that it closes higher, of course, we put the open here and the close there. But the one thing that you can see is that when you look at these two candles, you really have to concentrate to discern if it closed higher or closed lower. It's not that apparent. All the Japanese did is as follows to create a candlestick because the open to close relationship is so important they draw a rectangle from the open to closing price now if the market opens and then closes higher that is known as an empty candle a white candle if the market opens and then closes lower we call that a full candle or a black candle the third type of candle is called a doji. A doji, as a matter of fact, is the only candlestick type that looks identical on a bar chart and a candlestick chart. Now, the first thing that w one can realize by looking at that is that as a market moves in a defined trend up or down, because we have a visual representation, black or white, one can view large segments of price data very, very quickly and can ascertain movement and direction much easier than a bar chart. The second thing is that all of the technical techniques, the Western techniques that you have been utilizing, are still incorporated in candlesticks. Steve Nissan has said that it is a win-win situation. In other words, by using candlesticks, you give nothing up, but you gain insight into it. And that really is the beauty of it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to first start by talking about some very, very simple two-day patterns. And we're going to talk about the rationale or the psychological implications as to why they make sense. Now, we went through the white and the black candle. The doji is a very, very unique candle. And Brad, if you could take a moment and explain how a doji differentiates itself in terms of a consolidation in a market and what it represents. Unlike the black or the white candle, which is, is illustrating the dominance of either the bull or the bears uh, for this trading session to dominate this market session, a doji candle illustrates that neither the bulls nor the bears were able to drive the market price far enough or, or a, ma a majority difference away from the opening price, meaning that the bulls were unable to control the market and neither were the bears. In this instance, the market would close very near or right at the opening price of the current trading session. This is illustrating a 
a stagnation of trend, uh, an equal force between both the bulls and the bears, which is causing the market to consolidate or to congest within this area. A doji is very significant. A doji found after a defined uptrend or a defined downtrend is typically synonymous of market congestion and a possible top or bottom. Exactly. So the doji is, again, one of the most important candles to look for when you're trading with candlesticks. One thing that you'll see as we begin to illustrate it is that the doji typically can be found at probably 60 to 80 percent of the tops and bottoms because what happens is if a market is in a defined trend and the analogy I usually use is that of a train if we're sitting in a train moving 90 miles an hour down a track and we're coming close to that station where we're going to stop and then move backwards before the train can reverse and move the other way it has to do one thing it has to stop what a doji does is it illustrates that shift in direction. The Western term is, is a pivot point. The interesting thing is that it, the Japanese realized that that particular shape or that particular trading day or cycle was indicative of a market in which neither the bears or the bulls ultimately gained control. Because obviously with a black candle, that means that the, the bears had the dominating factor in the market on that day. And reciprocally, on a white candle, because it closes higher, it tells you that the bulls were able to win that battle that day. And the doji is the single most important candlestick to look for. There is another type of candlestick which has the same significance. It's a group called the umbrella lines. Now, the umbrella lines are composed of four basic candle types. A hangman, a shooting star, a hammer, and an inverted hammer. Now, one thing you might realize with some of these names like dark cloud cover, or hangman, or shooting star, is that the Japanese language is composed of kanji or word pictures unlike our language. And even the titles of the patterns and the candles themselves give one a visual imprint, really, of what the shape is like. And we will go in into particular examples and show you how effective these can be. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cover just a couple of very, very simple patterns right now to give you an idea of how these patterns can be identified, what to look for, and then as we get into the session, we are going to talk about particular markets and certain patterns that we have found through research have a higher frequency of occurrence, higher probability of success, and then we're going to take that and incorporate it all together into a trading style that we have found is very successful. In fact, when we first developed the program, after about eight months of work, we tested our results. And what we found was that candlesticks alone had an accuracy level of about 40%, enough to really hurt yourself. And in fact, I'll never forget the day when Brad looked at me and he says, Gary, he says, I've seen you trade for five years, and you hit seven, eight, nine out of 10 trades. I've programmed every pattern that you said that you use, and yet our net result is only 40%. And he looked at me and he says, why is that? And I looked at Brad and I said, because I don't always take the call. And you saw a light bulb just pop right into his head. And he said, well, what do you mean you don't always take the call? I said, well, I look at other factors. It's not just the candlesticks alone, but there has to be other factors before I'll actually take the call. And Brad looked at me and he says, well, what you're telling me then is we need to take this library and give it some sort of intelligence. And we went back to the drawing board and we developed algorithms that attempt to mimic the human mind. In other words, when we analyze candlesticks, 
we analyze it through not only the patterns that are found, but we also make sure that there are Western technical correlations, what we call confluence factors, that have to be evident before we will take the call.